Welcome everyone to our webinar focused on business evolution through AIPC. Nonsense Mystery, a director within the Packing ecosystem of HCL Tech. Today, I'm accompanied by two presenters. To start with, I'd like to invite Sara to introduce himself. Hello, everyone. My name is Sara. Uh, I'm part of Digital Workplace Business Unit in HCL, and I lead the global strategy, go to market, and product business worldwide. Thank you, Sara. Now we'll move on to Kim for his introduction. Hi, everybody. Kim Stekendries. I uh, uh, am part of the ecosystem enabling team at Intel. Thank you, Kevin. So, welcome everyone to our webinar on business uh, evolution through AIPC. Today, we're diving onto how AI powered computers and not just transform the way we work, but fundamentally reshape the landscape of enterprise business from enhancing productivity to fostering innovation. All AIPCs are at the forefront of the new digital revolution. We'll explore the impact, opportunities for growth, and strategies for integration within your business. Get ready to unlock the potential of AIPCs and propel your business into the future. So, Sarah, as we dive into today's webinar, I'd like to start by posing a question. Um, in your view, what are the upcoming trends in the integration of AIPC within the enterprise? So the evolution of AI processing from the cloud to edge, which is the PC world, it's a game-changing proposition today. The client AI would bring massive processing capabilities very close to the end user and the employees. This is actually the right sizing of AI, and it will make connected devices more powerful, more useful. And of course, the advantages of local AI processing, you know, the obvious ones are security, speed. But as we go into the future and rather the enterprise future, our very interesting use cases have already started emerging. For example, computer vision is one large domain. And then the, under that, you know, sub-use cases like facial recognition, emotive AI, employee sentiment analysis, object detection, autonomous vehicles, uh, the, the applications are rather limitless. Then what, as we used to call it, augmented reality, it will augment the augmented reality. It will negate the need of a specialized hardware which come at a huge cost. So even your PC device would be a good AR, VR, uh, you know, hardware for you, making uh, these technologies cheaper and cost for the enterprises. And then proactively detection of cyber threats. Uh, so improving the security stature in the hybrid work, uh, you know, for the enterprises. And then we also see that multifold increase in application performance, which are running on the devices. This will actually unleash the latent productivity of the employee and the workforce. And this convergence of the cloud with local computing, which is AI-driven, will lead to more personalization, more optimization, and more predictive actions that will actually deliver frictionless experiences for the employees in the organization. Thank you, Sarah. So, Kim, as you work at the forefront of where the AIPC is coming together, from your perspective, um, what can enterprise uh, expect from the uh, you know, what will AIPC bring to the business? Thanks. Yes, Anil. Um, I think, um, first of all, I must say, like, I agree with Saurabh. There's, you know, there, there's a big future here, uh, you know, both cloud and endpoint uh, AI. And, and I think in the near future, we'll see, you know, a, a hybrid model of those two with, you know, the best of, of each uh, um, world, right? Like combining. I think from, from our perspective, what we see today is is AI being used for you know an enterprise for two main reasons? Um, one is a lot of tasks that are improving your quality of lives day to day in the office that are running in the background. Um, you see a lot of these innovations that we've been doing with Microsoft, like in Teams, we have you know uh, improved background segmentation, better transcripting, all kind of these little you know quality of life improvements that. You know, basically, were were possible already in you know in the previous generations, but it you know now with now that we have you know things like an NPU um, more focused processing on the endpoints, we can run much more of these tasks in the background and and support you know basically make things nicer, right? At the other side, the the second stream of AI we see coming in um, a lot and you know are available today 
is you know the heavier workloads you know like in uh, you see from our from our launches you'll see a lot of graphics applications right video processing image processing again quality of life improvements you know the tedious tasks from the past are made much easier with the help of ai now that requires still a lot of computing those workloads are typically run on on local gpu and cpus um but you know these are these are very prevalent in in modern times, and I think makes everybody's life much easier um, on the professional side. Yeah, and also the opportunity to develop uh, many new types of applications that benefit the business. So on that note, uh, Saab, uh, can you illustrate with examples how AI applications have been effectively optimized for uh, use with uh, end user computing? Sure, sure. So we're actually working on various types of applications in various domains, which can be optimized leveraging AI PC. So first few examples that, that come to my mind is speech recognition, natural language processing, real-time voice translation, which is an upcoming domain. This will enable users to interact with their PC devices and application landscape residing on the PC devices by using voice, voice commands, natural language queries, uh, the way it's already done seamlessly on the mobile device side. So that will come to the PC world too. Computer vision and facial recognition. Now, this is beyond unlocking your devices, uh, you know, by recognizing your face. But these technologies like face recognition embedded within applications to access certain features as an additional layer of access control or security that can authenticate transactions using your facial features or your speech patterns. And then the uh, another area is image and video processing. As Kim mentioned, it can actually enable secure desk and lot of customers in regulated industries and a lot of profiles within these industries, you know, they're asking for a secure desk policy where the processing of use cases of images and videos happens on the device. This is uh, done to detect sus uh, suspicious behavior like shoulder surfing, clicking pictures of the screen, taking screenshots of important and confidential documents. All these activities and processing of that can be done on the PC. AI can detect any anomalies and it can actually trigger automatic resolution or immediate actions if an anomaly is detected. So these are few AI applications that come to my mind on the end user compute side. All right. No, that, that's a uh, you know, great insight. And uh, Kim, uh, um, now, from a given enterprise, right, what should they expect uh, in terms of secure enhancements? Obviously, because they will def uh, differ from vertical to vertical. So any particular uh, emphasis that you like to make uh, that uh, applies to uh, AIPC? I mean, if we're talking security, for, I, I think there's there's two main categories coming up, and Sarah touched on this as well, right? So there's there's um, a lot of the AI um, use cases will enhance, you know, corporate and end user security, but there's also a whole new field, you know, which will be security for AI, right? Which which is a whole uh, um, whole other uh, uh, whole other play field now. Um, but I think from the end user uh, perspective, I think uh, what we see on the security side is that, you know, uh, companies are making very smart use of uh, of how AI can do things, right? I think, you know, one of the examples we've shown uh, is is Buffer Zone um, that has created a um, uh, an AI-based anti or phishing uh, prevention uh, application, um, which basically makes sure that, you know, the AI... Um, quarantines and tests out any uh, suspicious links you get, right? So again, you know, I think we, in the near future, we'll see much more common. We're working with most of the large security ISVs in, in the field. We're working, you know, with you guys on uh, on some very interesting use cases. And I think, you know, um, as that all comes together in the next, I would say the next few quarters, um, we can expect so, some some big leaps on the security side as well. Yeah, so you mentioned use cases. That's a good segue into looking at uh, solutions. So, Snub, uh, uh, maybe you can provide some insights into what solutions or offerings are you building of the uh, HCL tech? Sure, and uh, specifically on the security side, uh, you know, as Kim mentioned, detecting and preventing malware, ransomware, phishing, cyber attacks, leveraging the power of AI because it can parse and process large uh, volume of data. Go beyond facial recognition. Face recognition is one thing, but uh, you know, scanning, iris scanning, voice recognition, your keystroke dynamics as you interact with your PC, 
you can see that too to a certain security posture. Enhancing DLP and compliance using NLP and LU, which is natural language processing or, uh, you know, uh, that, that is going to become very important. And then we are also building use cases on employee sentiment analysis, where a facial recognition technology can be used to see the overall motivation and sentiment levels of, of the workforce, which can actually complete the entire experience loop by complementing experience score uh, with the sentiment of the organization. So these are four or five high-level areas that we're all, already building use cases and uh, propositions with Intel. Thank you, Sarab. Uh, so on that note, Kim, obviously we talked about um, applications that um, uh, you know GSIs can uh, build, just just like Sarab just like I think what Sarab described. But uh, what about in terms of the you know when you actually make the procurement of AIPC, what kind of AI related applications are being rolled out is pretty much standard uh, within the uh, AIPC offering? Well, I mean, I think, you know, as, as to date, I think we have, uh, we have more than, than 50 IF or ecosystem that we work with, right, that have, you know, specific applications enabled for AIPC. Um, that number is going to grow exponentially. We, uh, I can say here, it's like we have taken a large target for, uh, for 2024 to get, you know, to expand that ecosystem even more. And, um, I think if we if we just take a, a look across the board, you know, I already mentioned a few a few things. I mentioned, you know, the the background, let's say, quality of life applications. We've seen the video. Uh, we talked security, right? I think those those are definitely the main categories we hit on. Um, and but then there's also like ex like new experiences that Intel has has taken taken it up to bring some of these new experiences to life. And and what we understand under new experience is something that you couldn't do before AIPC on an endpoint, right? Um, maybe one and and that people will see. I'll give a little teaser here at Vision as well. Uh, we'll we'll probably have those guys live. Is OmniBridge. And I just wanted to highlight that a little bit because, you know, as as many people know, our, our CEO is also a big fan because he he had some uh, um, hearing problems in the past and he still uses AIDS. And uh, OmniBridge is actually uh, a company that decided to bring um, ASL American Sign Language which into, into, into text and then to speech with AI. So you can speak, you know, to your camera in American Sign Language, and AI will translate that into speech on the other end um, to to smoothen, you know, to to smoothen or level the playing field there for people joining conference calls, like in the new hybrid model of working, right? P uh, but also, you know, in a retail setting and 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 all those things. So that's those kind of experiences is something that we're striving to bring out too and and I'm sure there's a lot of companies across you know the ecosystem that are trying to do some things like that both in business and and just in 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 the day-to-day -day life right on the consumer side yeah so uh, since you mentioned uh, Intel Vision 2024 um uh, yeah absolutely you know so uh, sort of um think about uh you know, Intel Vision 2024, what should business leaders expect regarding uh, uh, AIPC? Sure, sure. So, see, a lot of business leaders that we interact with, they're trying to grapple with the change of technology or change of the workplace landscape, right? They want their workspaces to be more efficient, more cohesive. They want to break away from this siloed approach of communication channel, disparate work tools, and they want to take this journey towards a seamless digital workplace, right? Towards that event, we are going to launch our marquee offering. It's called Unified Workspace or a UWX. It's completely powered by Intel platform. And it's a next generation transformative solution, which is actually designed and written grounds up to tackle these challenges head on. Right. So that's what we're going to launch in Intel Vision. It is designed to optimize the way you manage and run employee work workplace and you improve employee experience. Right. The platform will utilize AI and machine learning to automate it. Uh, to automate routine tasks and processes. It'll offer a centralized and a unified dashboard that will provide real-time visibility into various aspects, including incidents, their severity, resource utilization, in, uh, infra performance, and employee engagement levels. And then it is also powered by predictive analyst, uh, analytics and insights. It can leverage AI ops to predict and foresee patterns of failures 
and actually remedy find correct them before the actual becomes issue and uh, you know so this is towards the veil of unlocking the latent productivity in the workforce uh, so this is what we are going to launch in the Intel vision our unified workspace proposition part bring up thank you sarah uh, that's a huge array of uh, of uh, technology on how ai pc in great part, part you know great part within that space so kim um you know you know if we look at from your perspective right because you're you're coming in from the perspective of a technology provider right so um you know what have you planned uh, which seems very exciting also to show off at uh, intellivision 2024 yeah, and, and uh, yeah, I can definitely speak a little bit to that. I think what we are the most exciting about, well, first and foremost is, of course, to have our close partners there. And, and you know, I know HCL, thank you guys um, for for being a good partner throughout the years. And you guys will have, you know, a, a solid presence and vision. Um, next to that, I think um, what we want to show is is all the things you've seen throughout, you know, our December uh Intel Core Ultra launch, um, our messaging around AIPC, um, and then <clears throat> our um, our uh, Mobile World Congress commercial uh, client launch um, is you know all these things that you've seen you know in the press on on keynotes etc. We want to make sure that we show you these use cases that you can see you know them running that you can you can experience what you know what this technology can do and and i think our key message is that you know ai on a ai pc is here today with intel core ultra and it's only going to get better um you know towards the future but there's already a lot here today that we can uh, we can show and and do and i think that's what's going to be mostly most present from our from the client side from ai pc side of vision uh those tangible examples of these real world you know, operable use cases. So I, I hope to see as many of you as possible out there. <laughs> well, that's a great note to end on. So we now come to the end of uh, our conversation. So many thanks to Sarab and Kim for joining me in this webinar. And finally, thank you to everyone who took the time to watch this webinar. Until next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.